iPadOS 18 just came out and it brought some pretty cool features to your iPad. I'm drawing paper like and today I'll tell you a bit more about those features that I personally was most looking forward to. Starting off with Apple Notes and its biggest update in my opinion. You can now record audio in Notes just like you would in GoodNotes or Notability. To do that, just tap here to open the menu where you'd typically be able to scan or add media. Tap on record audio and there you go. Just like with good notes or notability, Apple Notes also transcribes your audio, which I think is really awesome. Now, when you're done recording, it will appear in your notes just like this. From here, you can play it or open it to see a full transcription. What's really cool is that you can actually copy the entire transcription to your note as well. If you use your iPad for lectures or for meetings, this new feature is a dream come true. The second feature I was really eager to try with the notes is Smart Script. This allows Apple Notes to analyze my handwriting and refine it, ultimately making it more readable and keeping it as close as possible to my handwriting style. It works surprisingly well, to be honest. Notes actually reads and interprets my handwriting perfectly 9 times out of 10, and considering I don't have the cleanest handwriting, I need to give Apple kudos for this. Now to activate it, just open your toolbar, tap the three dot menu, and you will get an option to enable automatically refining your handwriting. Now, one thing I'm pretty sure that people missed with this update is this right here. Yeah, your titles are now collapsible. By tapping on the arrow here, you can hide the whole parts of your notes. This is a feature I use a lot within Notion, so I'm really happy to see it come to Apple Notes as well. Little bonus having this, it allows for easy copy and pasting of collapsed paragraphs. And last thing I want to mention within Apple Notes is that you can also solve math equations within your notes. Math Notes allows to use your Apple Notes to evaluate expressions, assign variables, or solve simple equations on your iPad. And this is the perfect segue to the big feature that was introduced within Apple Notes, which is the calculator. Yeah, you finally have one on your iPad. And it allows you to use three different modes, basic, scientific, and math notes, which will then be saved within, well, you guessed it, Apple Notes. You can also enable the conversion of various units. In my case, I'll probably be using currency conversions mostly, but I see myself using metric to imperial conversions from time to time as well. On to our next new feature, which I find especially satisfying. From the earliest versions of iPadOS, your iPad home screen has required apps to be placed in a strict grid. And iPadOS 18 finally introduces some freedom within that app grid. Now you can place your apps and widgets anywhere on the grid, leaving space in between if you want to. This can be especially nice when you have a specific wallpaper with places you don't want to cover up, or if you want to create specific areas on your home screen. Oh, and you can actually create your personal layouts for both orientations, in portrait and in landscape, which is awesome. As for icons, you can now change their look as well. You can choose between dark and light modes, finally a true dark mode, which I find especially cool. Or you can also apply a tint to your apps, making them look uniform. I was not really on the positive side with this last option, but actually after seeing it, I think it can be really cool if, for example, you want to keep a minimalistic style to your home screen and want your apps to look all the same. Now, it's not really working at 100% yet. Some widgets still keep their original color scheme, so yeah, some work still needs to be done on this, but it's already pretty cool to use. Moving on to the next feature, but still staying with app customization. You now have the ability to either hide or lock certain apps. When you tap and hold on any app, you can choose to require Face ID or Touch ID or a password if your iPad doesn't have Face ID. When choosing this option, you can either require Face ID anytime you open it or hide the app altogether. If you hide it, the app will disappear and be moved to a hidden album that can be found at the bottom right of your app library. This is great if you share your iPad with family members or roommates, for example, anyone who keeps certain contents private. The control center got updated as well. When you bring it up, you'll notice that it was completely redesigned. Now, to bring on the customization options, just tap and hold on the blank space. 
You can remove something by tapping on a minus buttons and you can add buttons by tapping here. You'll notice that the list of available controls presents many more options when compared with previous iPadOS versions. And finally, you can drag this corner here to adjust the size of your controls. Okay, all of this is pretty cool, but the most exciting part of this is that now I can add shortcuts to my control center, which is pretty great if I want to declutter my home screen a little bit. Now, a few updates were announced for Safari as well. Some of them involve Apple intelligence, which I couldn't get my hands on, so I'm not going to talk about those, but two new features actually came through. First, Safari now allows users to hide distracting items from web pages. When you're any website, you can press on the reader icon next to the address bar, select the hide distracting items, and from there you just tab on portions of the screen that are of no interest to you. This is awesome if you're planning on spending a lot of time on a precise page and you want to do it without any distractions or if you want to screenshot the whole thing without any ads. Now please note that this is not an ad blocker. If you refresh the page, the ads will most probably appear again. The other cool feature within Apple's browser is the ability to listen to articles. By tapping on the same reader icon up here, you can tap here and Siri will read out the page for you. You can play and pause it like with any other app and you can even do it from your lock screen, which is pretty awesome. Now, it's cool, but it's not perfect yet. Siri will read out every single piece of text in the article, dates included. But if you're like me and you get a little sick on bus or train rides, this is a great way to keep up with your news without having to stare at the screen. And this, my friends, rounds up this video. These were my most anticipated new features within iPadOS 18. But I'm curious, which ones were yours? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you're just starting out with note-taking on your iPad, you should definitely check out my latest video on that subject. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.